Hi Tech Lab here, part four of our off-grid power loop rebuild. And here I am in my main load panel, and as you can see, I have a lot of my circuits terminated. In this gutter, I have my uh, everything in here. I'm zip tied within two inches of entering uh, twice. I have new conduits ran my switch, a 90 with a kick right here. I plan to run this Unistrut all the way down. I got my razor blades and I have a convenience outlet installed and we're all made up in here nice and clean and organized and um, you kind of saw a little bit of this on the last video but uh, I need my two inch grounding hub there before I can get that all uh, bonded together and we're we're good on the panels I have the lights rewired so now my lighting circuit is out of this conduit and the fan circuit is pulled out that's this one right focus right here that's the fan circuit so that's going to need to be uh, reworked into the whole ordeal but that's going to need to be on a contactor so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to uh, get that in yet but um, now at this point I am completely free on this side so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this uh, panel and these conduits out all right so here we are I have the panel and gutter removed we still have a piece of conduit on well a couple of pieces of conduit up here but this is all clear I have my panels I vacuumed this one out I still need to clean out this one I got the gutter cleaned up by the way uh, before anybody gets concerned I'm using this ideal Noah locks on all my copper to aluminum connections so uh, wherever I have copper to aluminum that's where I what I've been using if you look up here I have my solar edge um, I'll get you the nameplate my auto transformer in place so you can go ahead and look that up if you want more information and that's going to be here in the split panel I have a heck of a piece of, I need to take that sticker off that piece of conduit was a heck of a time to bend it's inch and three quarter offset in five and three quarter inch length. And that's just like pushing the limit of, of what's uh, possible to actually bend. I need to clean up in here. It's getting messy. I pulled all the wire out. So, um, by the way, this is the graph of the solar. So this right here on this side right here is today. So we're charged up with our kind of hacked together uh, stuff so let's see how we are you can see we're at generators off we're at six percent load I don't know if you can see you can see me in the reflection so yeah I'm gonna I'm, now at this point go ahead and mark uh, I'm gonna take a piece of strut and draw a line and give myself um, a couple of two inch KOs and I have these uh, two inch chase nipples. Um, so I'm going to try and get two and two. Uh, there may even be a two inch hole already in here. Nope, not two inches. It's close. So I'm going to try and punch some holes. Those may be one inch. I know I have some one inch uh, somewhere. I have one inch chase nipples. There is one. Let's see. Yeah, so that'll work. I, I can actually use those one inch holes and then I don't need to keep punching and plugging. So I'll probably come in, in here, here, maybe. I'll see. I'll mark it out. I'll punch some holes and I'll keep you guys updated. Oh, and I'm also going to put a uh, two inch in this gutter right here. So I don't know if you guys saw, I have all my terminations made up and the conduit for light switch, convenience outlet. I got this swapped out to a deep box, and this was another fun conduit to bend. So that's where I'm at. Stay tuned. So here we are. I have the gutter put in place. It actually went a lot farther than I was expecting. Um, for reference, these gutters are about 150 bucks for 10 foot. That makes them 15 dollars a foot. So where this distance is, where I have to cut it down. If I can't use that somewhere else, I'm eating the cost of that at about two cents an inch or twenty cents an inch. I think is what it comes out to. Let me think about that. 
Anyway, um, so I have this in place. I have two screws here where I'm going to have my uh, coupler. But the reason I have this only uh, lightly screwed in is because I have yet to mark uh, where all my chase nipples over here are going to go. So I'm going to get those marked, but then I need to bring this down, um, punch the holes, and then bring it back up. So I'm going to mark those and go ahead and punch those holes. But yeah, that'll look pretty sweet going all the way down to the other wall. And yeah, I have this, if we check the measurement... Bear with my terrible camera skills here. We are dead on 34 inches above the finished floor. Now this container is not sitting level, so if, uh, how do I put this? In, in our trade, uh, as electricians, we often use a level. So if I go, I have my level. I gotta make sure it's all cleaned. We level things, so if I were to level this, as you can see, it'd be a mile off. And I had to do the same thing with these panels. I had to measure off known straight edges. So if you look at this panel, it's also out of level. If we come over here to the end of this container, and I got the block rocker, so I'm happy. You can see the container. Focus is off, and this direction also, the container is off. So that's one thing you got to keep in mind when you're doing things that aren't um, on known level surfaces, like this container is just set on the uh, on the dirt. You got to really take into account: um, Are you measuring off known, um, you know, known points? So I know in this case. If I keep everything 34 inches off the floor, which actually right here, I'm sagging, so this has to come up. That's going to need to come up. But if you measure off known uh, reference points, such as the floor, you'll be good. So that's the inside of the wireway. So I'm going to get those holes punched, and I'll be back. I'm going to clamp this, though, because that gap is, is no good. So here I have all my holes marked. Now I use silver sharpie on, on this kind of thing and I like it because if you end up putting an extra mark it's not as noticeable if you forget to uh, erase it. It's also, you know, great to see. I mean black is, yeah, the best to see but um, those are all the holes I got to punch so I'm going to get started. They're all in place. Punched out, knocked out, gutter is in as you can see. And one thing to take into account, I do have a bit of a gap. Now this uh, gutter isn't secured to the wall yet. Uh, this end cap isn't tightened down. I just only have it set in place. Um, but yeah, I have my... Um, that only has a 2 inch, but over here we have uh, 2 2 inches and 2... Or my bad, 3 2 inches and a 1 inch uh, hole punched. So I have a shopping list. I need to get some material before I can continue. Uh, for example, right here, this lock ring, uh, this, or my bad, bushing needs to be a lock ring and grounding hub. So I can't make up the connections for the auto transformer I installed up there until I have the correct um, connections on that uh, chase nipple through the panels. So over here I just have a 27 and 3 quarter inch um, piece of 2 inch EMT holding up this gutter because uh, that's just the height. We have a quarter inch gap down there. We were at 34 inches to the bottom of the cans down there. Um, so minus 6 plus, uh, and then minus another quarter inch that's 27 and 3 quarters. So yep, that's that. Now my next challenge coming over here to the inverter side is this right here with the back-to-back -back 90s this 90 up here is going to need to go what I plan to do and bear with me here is I plan to bring a gutter up across over and then over again okay so I'm gonna have and bear with me this conduit right here is gonna need to change to 2 inch because uh, I'm going to run parallel 4-aught for uh, the DC for the charge controller. 
So these terminals down here are going to need to change to, to dual uh, chair lugs. Um, and that's going to need to scoot this way um, because I'm going to have a gutter right across the top of here. Um, and I'm going to need to land those two. You can see the three quarter inch conduits up there. Those are going to need to land in the gutter. So this can is going to go. We're going to come straight up with our pipe. Gutter across. Straight up right here at the piece of pipe. Um, but my challenge is, is if with the gutter, you have the open side, right? Well, obviously across the top of here, I'm going to have the open side uh, facing kind of how, how the, the same direction that the open side of that can is facing. But the problem is where I make this 90, if you look at how I'm doing these 90s, if I have uh, across the face and I need to come this direction, I can't do that because it obstructs with the cover. So I would need to come out the side and this direction, which would mean the cover plate can't be on this side, it would need to be on this side. If you imagine there's another gutter coming out um, projecting from the wall. So in this case over here where I'm going to have a gutter projecting out from the wall, if I run across here with the cover facing the same direction, then my piece that comes across here, I can't have the cover face this way, it needs to face that way. Which is no big deal, except we come over here and realize our bus bar, if that gutter goes all the way flush to the wall, it would also on this end need to go all the way up to the wall. Because we're going to have another gutter on this one where the cover is going to face out. So I'm kind of in, in a bit of a pickle where I, I don't want the cover of the gutter facing this way because then if you take the cover and it, it drops down, these covers, if you look, um, the screws dig in and they ground through the screw to the can, the covers. So if I'm taking that cover off and it drops down onto that bus bar, now that's the, the positive bus bar, which is bonded to, um, my bad, negative is bonded to earth. So if the cover drops down and hits the positive bus bar, it's going to explode. So I need to figure out a solution. And one option is a gutter 90 up at the top. Um, and I, I'm not familiar with those so much. But in theory, that'll allow me to put my cover plate this way. Um, but they're, they're about 80 bucks a piece. And if I can avoid doing that, I will. But I just need to, to figure out how I'm going to do that. Because also, I can't have the cover really facing this way. Because then these uh, pipes up here, I can't come in the face of the gutter with those pipes. So I'm kind of I'm stuck. So if you guys have any thoughts on how I can run that instead... Um, without having to use the 90 then go ahead and leave them in the comments below if not I'll figure it out you guys will have something interesting to come back to the next video for while I'm on the topic so over here I have an LB up here and I have a 240 volt single phase uh, coming in from the generator and that's temped into the inverter but my solar also comes in there and this was something I did bad when I originally built the room is my solar and power entrances were in the same conduit and you can't mix voltages in the conduit uh, which I've learned since then. So I'm going to have this side over here of the room, the DC side, um, and run parallel 4 aught. So I'm planning on 6 charge controllers in the future, 80 amps a piece, 4 aught is good for uh, 200 amps. Uh, by the way, it's aluminum, not copper. Um, so you up, you go up a size. So 3 aught copper is 200 amps. 4 aught aluminum is the same as 3 aught copper. And um, anyway, so I plan on in the future having up to six charge controllers because then we're at our capacity of our um, amp hour rating of, of both battery banks. So we'll have 2,000 amp hours at 48 volts and your target charge rate is a tenth of the battery capacity so if you have 2,000 amp hours of battery capacity your target is 20 amp or my bad 200 amps charging rate so I imagine with six charge controllers now I'm not pegging these out to the full 80 amps in fact these two barely even hit um, probably not even 40 amps at 48 volts that's 
Uh, I, I, I'm not doing the math right now because my head hurts. Um, but either way, I'm sure uh, I'm not going to overload the charge capacity of the batteries with six of them. That means I can have six arrays. Um, anywho, I'm getting a little off topic. But what I need to figure out also is my generator inputs come in through there. So I want, since that's kind of on the DC side of the room, I want to keep the solar coming in through that conduit. The LB is going to go. It's going to switch to gutter. Um, but I need to figure out where I'm going to put, I have another gutter, a NEMA 3, which is outdoor rated, right here. So this is outdoor rated, and it's, um, this is the top, so if it rains, it runs down over top, it doesn't have a place to enter. And what this will be is, um, this will be for my generator power, I have a plug, uh, receptacle inlet, that goes on, I'll literally mount it in the end of the can. But I need to come from this can outside, through the wall of the container, through the um, insulation. I, and I got this kind of figured out how to get through. But um, as you can see, there's some thickness to go through. Um, but I'm not sure where I want to locate that. Part of me thinks I have a, uh, I'll do it up here. I have another can. I think it's a 10 by 10 or 8 by 8. And I'll go straight out the back and use some of these existing uh, knockouts. Because um, I need to fill those knockouts anyway, so I may as well use them. That's why I have the three-quarter to the auto transformer up here. Um, so that's, that's just another task I need to accomplish is getting the generator power inlet separated from the uh, solar inlet. So there's plenty to do, um, but it's Saturday. I still have Sunday. I need some material, but I'll get there. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more updates. And man, these this just looks awesome with how nice I got this panel to go. I'm really satisfied with that. So anyway, give a thumbs up. Uh, comment your opinions. Help me out on my, my predicament with this gutter. And other than that, this has been High Tech Lab. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.